In this two-part series, I'm going to show you how to build this account creation form from scratch. In this first part tutorial, I'm going to show you how I use the Figma design to define the HTML structure. In my next video, I'm going to show you how I incorporated basic validation using vanilla JavaScript. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So to get started, I'm opening up a CodePen project. At the top of the HTML, I have a link to the font family I'm going to use for this project, and I also have a link for Font Awesome. And then beneath that, I have body tags, which are empty. In the CSS, I added a preprocessor of SCSS, which allows me to declare variables in this way. And then beneath that, I just have some basic styling, like setting the box sizing set to border box and a margin and padding to zero. And the JavaScript is completely empty. In this first part tutorial, I'm going to go over the HTML and all of the CSS. But to get started, I'm going to show you the Figma design. So this is the overall view of the project that we are going to create we're going to make an account creation form. So we have an empty state, which is visible when the user lands on the page. We have an error state when the user tries to submit a form without inputting any information. And we have a success state when the user has actually inputted information. So I'm going to show you how to create this web design from scratch. So initially, if we zoom in a bit, we can see that we have this container that holds all of the elements. In this container, we have a header, and then we have a form. And the form includes two elements, one for the username and one for the password, and then it has a submit button. I also want to add some styling to this, so the actual label is on top of the input field. So this is how I want the empty state to look. And in the error state, I want the border to become red, I want an error message to appear, and I want there to be a little error icon. In the success state, I want the border to turn green and I want a little success icon to be visible here. So to get started, I'm going to jump inside of the HTML so we can actually start laying out the content for this page. So first, I'm going inside of the body tags of the HTML. And for the body, first I'm going to create a div with a class of container, and this will hold the entire element on the page. In this container, first I'm going to include a header element with a class of container header. And this will contain the text, create an account. And beneath this, I'm going to create the actual form. So I'm going to create a form with a class of form. This will hold all the input fields and the button. So within here, I need to decide how I want to lay out the content for this page. So going back to the design, we can see that the form holds several elements. So in the error state, I want several elements to be visible on the page. I need there to be the label for the form. I need there to be the form input. I want there to be icons to indicate whether it was a success or a fail. And I want to include an error message at the bottom. So I need to contain all these elements in the HTML structure. So going back in here, I'm going to create a div with a class of form group. So this will hold all of the elements that relate to one form element. And for each form group, I'm going to first contain a label. And the label will be for a username. And I'm going to give it a class of form label. So for the first element, I'm just going to give it the text of username. Now beneath this, I need to include an input type. So here I'm going to include an input with a class of form input. It will have a type of text, so I can leave that alone. And I'm also going to add some placeholder here of create a username. And I'm also going to set autocomplete to off. Now in order to have the error and success icons visible on the page, I'm actually going to embed them within the HTML. So within here, I'm going to add two SVGs. The first one will have a class of form success icon, and the second one will have a class of form error icon. And I already picked the icons that I wanted right here, so I'm just going to take those SVGs and add them to the document.
Now the last thing I need to add is the paragraph tag that will be visible when we want to display an error message. So I'm going to include a paragraph tag beneath those SVGs and I'm going to give it a class of form message. So this is the basic structure for every form group. So now I'm just going to add the other form group for the password field. And the last thing I need to add for this form is a button with a class of form button. And I'm just going to give it the text of submit. So this is the underlying structure for this account creation form. So now I can jump inside of the CSS to apply some styling. So first within the body tags, I'm going to set the height to 100% of the viewport height, and I'm going to set the display of this to grid. Now, if you're brand new to grid, I have an entire crash course video that goes over all of the basics. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. And I'm also going to set the justify content and align item set to center. I'm also going to add a color for the text and a background color. Next, I'm going to start working on the actual container. So I'm going to reference the class of container and I'm going to set the background color to white and I'm going to add some padding. Next, I'm going to add a border radius and a particular width. So now we can see that the container is more clearly defined. Next, I'm just going to add a margin bottom to this header. So here I'm going to write and header and set that value. Next, I'm going to work on the actual forms. So here I'm going to reference the class of form and I'm going to add all of the code within here. Now within that form, I really have three children elements. I have a form group one, form group two, and I have a button. So here I'm going to set the display of it to flex with the flex direction of column. And then I'm going to add a gap of two REM. Next, I'm going to apply certain styling for the actual group. So again, the form group holds the username, the actual input field, the icons, and the paragraph tag. So initially, I'm just going to add some placeholder text to the paragraph tag so we can actually see what we're doing on the page. But initially, this will really be empty. So within here, I'm going to reference the group. So I'm going to write and group. And again, the reason why I can do this is because I added SCSS as a preprocessor. So if you're not using SCSS, you can just reference each class manually. So you can write form underscore underscore group. But for this, I'm also going to set the display of this to flex with a flex direction of column. And I'm going to set the position of it to relative. And it's because I'm going to add a position absolute to other elements within the design. So I need the actual group to be a position relative. Next, I'm going to work on the actual label. So if we go back to the design, we can see that I want this label to have a specific treatment. I want it to be lowered quite a bit so it kind of cuts through that input box. And I also want there to be some space between the input field and the actual label. So going back into the CSS, I'm going to reference that label. So I'm going to write and label. Again, because that is how we referenced it in the HTML. And for this, I'm going to set the position of this to absolute. That way I'll have full control over how I want it to be placed in the design. I'm going to set a top and left positioning. I'm going to set the background color to white so that way it blends into the background. I'm going to set the padding zero for the top and bottom and 0.5 REM for the left and right. And I'm also going to specify the font size as 0.8 REM. So we can actually see this is starting to come together. Next, I'm going to work on the input. So going back to the design, we can see that the input field has its particular style in the landing state, and there's quite a bit of breathing room within the element. So going back into the CSS, I'm going to reference the input. I'm going to set the padding to one REM, and I'm going to set the font family to inherit. I'm also going to set the color to inherit and the outline to none. And I want that border to have a different treatment. So I'm going to set it to one pixel solid and to a specific gray color. And I'm also going to add a border radius here. So we can see it's starting to come together. Next, I'm going to work on the actual icons. So again, I only want those icons to be visible after the user selects the submit button. 
So I'm going to apply a specific treatment for the icons, but then set the display of it to none so that way it's not visible in the landing state. So beneath this, I'm going to write and success icon, comma, and error icon, because there are particular values I want both the icons to have. So I want both of these elements to be placed in the same exact location. I'm going to set the position of this to absolute as well, and I'm going to specify the right and top positioning, and then I'm going to set the width of this to one REM. So now we can see the icons are placed where I want them to be placed in the form, although they are overlapping one another. Now I'm going to apply specific treatment for each one. So beneath this, I'm going to reference the success icon and set the fill to the success color that I already declared. And then I'm going to set the color for the error icon. Now I don't want these icons to be visible in the landing state, so I'm going to actually set the display of this to none. But we will add them back depending on the JavaScript state. So next I'm going to work on the actual error message. So again, that's under the paragraph tag with a class of form message. So beneath this, I'm going to reference and message. And I'm going to set the font size to 0.8 REM. I'm going to set the margin top. I'm going to set the color of it to the error state. And that's because in this design, I only want it to be visible in the error state. And then to hide it from view, I'm going to set the display of it to none. So now I can actually go back to the HTML and remove that hello text because that was just placeholder. The last thing I'm going to do right now is apply styling for the actual submit button. So beneath this, I'm going to write and button, and I'm going to set the outline to none, the border to none, and add some padding. I'm going to set a border radius, and I'm going to set the font family to inherit. I'm going to set the cursor to pointer, so that way it looks interactive. I'm going to set the background color to the primary color, and I'm going to set the color of the text to white. So there you go. That's all of the HTML and CSS to get the project started. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to add basic validation with vanilla JavaScript. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.